Hello, welcome to my channel, Small Optics. My name is Jason. Now, today's subject is M3. Now, M3 is what's known as a globular cluster. Now, a globular cluster is just a, an intensely populated, dense grouping of, st of stars. And they actually look like a ball of stars. They, do, they just look like a little sphere of stars, if you like. One of my favorite type of star clusters, actually. Well, there's two types. There's uh, open clusters and there's globular clusters. And they're both pretty self-explanatory, really. Globular clusters are more compact, as where open clusters are more more spread out. Now M3 was first discovered on uh, May 3rd 1764 and it's actually the first target that uh, Charles Messier which is what the M stands for in all these M targets is Messier, Charles Messier who was a French um, Cobbit hunter of all things but he kept finding these uh, faint fuzzies in the sky and it was annoying him actually and he wrote a catalogue of things to avoid uh, you know so he didn't mistake them as comets but we now uh, love it as the uh, Messier catalogue. Now even though this was the first um, target that he saw or, or annoyance to him um, it is listed as M3 and it's just that it, in, uh, in the modern catalogue we just listed it as the third listing on the Messier catalogue. And the great thing about M3 is it's relatively easy to find as well. It's not one of one of those targets where you're going to spend nights and nights searching for it and being unsuccessful. And uh, this is where my triangulation method, where I like to triangulate things, really comes into play. Now, when you do find M3, which we'll get onto in a minute and show you exactly where to find it, uh, what you're actually looking at is something that's round about 11 billion years old. Uh, the distance is roughly 33,000 light years away and uh, it, it consists of around about 500,000 stars. So if you can just comprehend all those figures when you're actually observing M3, it really does make you really appreciate what you're looking at. So without further ado, let's uh, have a look at and where you can find M3. Right, to find M3, what we need to do is find the constellation Booties. Uh, or more importantly, the big bright main star of Booties, Arcturus. Now, Arcturus is the big um, red giant, um, and it's easily found. Now, th the easiest way of finding Arcturus, if we just move up a little bit, um, what you need to do, I'm sure you'll be familiar with the plow, Ursa Major. Uh, the plow, Big Dipper. Now, if you follow the handle of the of the saucepan or saucepan, yeah. Um, so if we if we uh, follow the handle of the saucepan, and if you continue that line round, you'll see that it virtually points directly to Arcturus, and that's an easy way of finding and, and identifying booties. Now, once you've uh, identified Arcturus, um, it's just a good idea if you're not familiar with booties. It's just to familiar familiar yourself with the constellation it's quite a distinctive constellation and it's quite a bright constellation so you're going to have no trouble finding it right let's just zoom in a little bit so let me show you what you need to look for now as you can see we've got in um, booties we've got Arcturus and then we have this little star here uh, Rel booties I don't know how you pronounce the half of these things but that star there is quite a, it's a lot fainter than Arcturus now this is where it's going to be really easy for you to find M3 if we take this distance between this star and Arctur Arcturus and then all we've got to do is extend that out into outer space and virtually form a right angle triangle. Um, now, not a right angle triangle, an e equatorial triangle. That's the word I'm looking for. And as you can see just there, um, if I just highlight it, there's M3. Now, as you can see, this really does form almost a perfect triangle between these three stars. Now, I, I have done a video on this triangulation method of, of uh, helping you find deep sky targets. Um, so I'll leave a link to that in the description. But this is what you need to do. And as you can see, each it's virtually all, all the triangle is, it, like I say, is equal. 
you then have to project this image once you've got uh, if you're doing it on this is stellarium by the way this software i'm using here um um free to download by the way i'll leave a link to stellarium in the description um you just project this image then onto the sky take all these proportions and all these dimensions project it onto the sky and this point here where m3 is this is where you obviously need to put your crosshair of your finder scope or the dot of your red finder just have a little fish around this area of the sky once you're there and trust me folks you're gonna have no trouble finding this target it's not a difficult target to find especially using this triangulation method now remember as with all deep sky objects always use your lowest powered eyepiece that's usually the one that has the highest number on it's usually a 20 or a 20 25 or anything above that is always a good starting point when you're looking for deep sky ob objects it's going to give you the most brightest object there's more there's, there's all the light you're going to get a lot more light coming into the telescope uh using a uh, higher powered um eyepiece now when you do find this target which you will um it's it's you what you can do with globular clusters is start increasing the power just a little bit um don't go mad don't start putting your barlows on there and, and things like that but just like once you've started with your 20 or your 25 maybe try and just swapping the eyepiece out for something like a 10 millimeter and really spend some time at the eyepiece don't just look at it and go oh yeah that's good and then move on stand there appreciate it the longer you spend at the eyepiece the more you'll start seeing a, a lot more detail in the target itself a lot more stars will start appearing always use averted vision when looking at deep when visually looking at deep sky objects and that's just the technique of just looking off to one side not looking directly at the target so you're using your kind of uh corner of the eye phenomenon if you like these parts of your eye are a lot more sensitive to light and can sometimes really uh, try and refine and, and, and you can see the uh, these faint fuzzies just that little bit better by using averted vision. But M3 is quite a bright target, so you, you shouldn't have much trouble seeing it at all. Um, I can see it perfectly well in this 5-inch telescope, and even in, I haven't got it at hand in a minute, I've got a little 60 millimeter refractor, and... It's, it looks lovely in that too. So you don't, you're not going to need, um, you know, perfect skies. You're not going to need an enormous telescope to see this target. You can have no problem with it and uh, you should enjoy this one a lot. Well, there you go, folks. Another target for you to go and hunt and find on the next clear night. Well, thank you so much for watching if you've watched this far. Um, don't forget uh, to hit that like button if you did like the video. And while we're on that subject of liking, you may have noticed that uh, underneath every video, every one of my videos now, there's a money sim symbol. This is a new feature that uh, YouTube have brought out, and it's what's called a super thanks. And so if you find a video uh, particularly useful and you want to give me a special thanks, you can just buy me a drink through it uh, so it would be massively appreciated well in the meantime folks go and find yourself another messier target and i will see you on the next one bye for now